Hello everyone. Welcome back to the series of lectures on chemical bonding. In today's lecture, we'll talk about valency shell electron pair repulsion theory, in short called as Vesper theory. So Vesper theory was proposed by Sidwick and Powell and it was developed by Nylom and Gillespie. This theory is very successful in explaining the structure of a molecule. So the structure of a molecule is determined by number of electron pairs present on the central atom and repulsions between electron pairs. So we can have two different types of electron pairs. The electron pairs that are shared with other atoms, these are called bond pairs. And electron pairs that are localized on a particular atom, these are called lone pairs. So in general, repulsions between two lone pairs are very stronger compared to lone pair and a bond pair repulsions, which in turn are stronger than bond pair, bond pair repulsions. And also if we have multiple bonds, like if we have triple bonds, then the repulsions are stronger compared to double bonds, which have stronger repulsions than single bonds. So the main feature of Vesper theory is given a molecule, let us say like AB3, the central atom is A. So how many electron pairs are surrounding this? It is surrounded by three atoms, AB3. So we have three electron pairs surrounding it. Based on that, we can predict the structure of a molecule. So the main thing is, how do you predict the structure of a molecule is based on number of electron pairs and repulsions between these electron pairs. So now let us see how do we predict the structure of a molecule. If you have two electron pairs without any lone pairs. Now first I will discuss cases in which there are no lone pairs. And then after that we will see what happens when lone pairs are present. So when there are no lone pairs, all electron pairs are two and two are bond pairs then the geometry is linear. For example, let us take BeCl2, beryllium chloride. So beryllium in its valency shell, in its last shell, it has two electrons. So these two electrons are shared with two chlorine atoms forming BeCl2. So beryllium in the middle and the two chlorines attached on the two opposite sides. The, the geometry is linear and the bond angle is 180 degrees. So this is the case when there are only two electron pairs. If there are three electron pairs, then the geometry is planar triangular. So the molecule lies in a plane in the form of a triangle. So as an example here, we see BF3, boron trifluoride. Boron has three electrons in its valency shell. So these three electrons are shared with three fluorine atoms. And these bonds lie in a plane in the form of a triangle. So the bond angle between F, B, F bond angle is 120 degrees. So this is a perfectly planar. We have this lies in a single plane. So then let us go to the case when we have four electron pairs. So then the geometry is tetrahedral and the bond angle is 109 degrees, 28 minutes. So as an example, we consider here methane, CH4. So in carbon, there are four electrons in the valency shell. The valence electron configuration of carbon, 2H2, 2P2, it has four valence electrons. So these four valence electrons are shared with four hydrogen atoms. So the resulting structure is a tetrahedral structure with the four hydrogens pointing towards four corners of a tetrahedron as you can see from the image here. So here this is not a planar structure clearly you see that carbon, hydrogen, hydrogen, carbon and the two hydrogens lie in one plane. One hydrogen is coming forward, the other hydrogen is going backward. So this clearly is a, is clearly is not a planar geometry. So let us move ahead. So if there are five electron pairs, then the shape of the molecule is trigonal bipyramidal and you have two kinds of bond angles, 120 degrees and 90 degrees bond angles. As an example, we see PCl5, phosphorus pentachloride. Phosphorus is having five electrons in its valency shell. So these five electrons are shared with five chlorine atoms. The shape is trigonal bipyramidal. So one phosphorus and three chlorine, they lie in a triangle. 
and there is one pyramid one chlorine atom going up and another chlorine atom coming down so this is the trigonal bipyramidal shape so if you measure the bond angle between the chlorine atom that is going up we, i call it axial chlorine atom and the chlorine atom that is lying in the triangle which i call equatorial chlorine atom if i measure the bond angle between an axial chlorine atom and the equatorial chlorine atom the bond angle is cl p cl bond angle is 90 degrees however if i measure bond angles that between two chlorine atoms that lie in the triangle two equatorial chlorine atoms this bond angle is 120 degrees so this is the structure of pcl5 when there are five electron pairs the shape is trigonal bipyramidal the bond angles between axial chlorine and an equatorial chlorine is 120 uh, is 90 degrees and then a uh, uh, bond angle between two equatorial uh, chlorines is 120 degrees let us go to the case where we have six electron pairs when we have six electron pairs the shape of the molecule is octahedral this shape is like we have a square and a pyramid going up and a pyramid coming down it's also called square by pyramidal shape so all the bond bond angles are 90 degrees in this so if you either measure bond angle between two equatorial fluorine atoms or one axial and one equatorial fluorine all these bond angles are 90 degrees so sulfur sf6 sulfur has six valence electrons so these six valence electrons are shared with six fluorine atoms which contribute one electron each and then we have a perfect octahedral geometry and finally i move to seven electron pair case so we have seven electron pairs the geometry is pentagonal bipyramidal and they have two kinds of bond angles 72 degrees and 90 degrees so as an example i consider if7 here iodine has total seven electrons in its valence shell so these seven electrons are shared with seven fluorine atoms so out of the seven fluorine atoms five lie in one plane one is going up and the other fluorine atom is coming downward this five form a pentagon and one pyramid is going up one pyramid coming down this pentagonal bipyramidal structure if i measure a bond angle between a axial fluorine and a equatorial fluorine that fluorine that is lying in the plane this bond angle is of course 90 degrees but if i measure within the pentagon which is within the plane of, uh, plane of the pentagon then the bond angles are all 72 degrees so we have 72 into 5 which is like 360 degrees right so these are all the cases uh, that were discussed in the original vesper theory uh, when there are uh, like no lone pairs zero lone pairs all are all bond pairs that means all electrons are involved in the bonds there are no unshared electron pairs but in many cases there are some unshared electron pairs that are localized on a atom on the central atom so in such case the shape of the molecule will be different from what we predict from this tables as an example i consider here three different molecules ammonia water and clf3 so let us consider the ammonia molecule nitrogen the central atom is nitrogen here nh3 so nitrogen has total five electrons in its valence shell but here i have only three hydrogen atoms so only three electrons are shared with three hydrogen atoms so there is one lone pair that remains on nitrogen so only three electrons are shared right so how many electrons are remaining 5 minus 3 two electrons that is a pair of electrons are remaining so because of this the geometry is not tetrahedral like methane but one electron pair is a lone pair so we need to disregard that and the resulting molecule is pyramidal nitrogen and three hydrogens in the form of a pyramid so here we don't have any tetrahedral arrangement because the other site is occupied by the lone pair 
so the bond angle in tetrahedral case is 109 degrees 28 minutes but here the bond angle is 107 degrees 48 minutes this change in bond angle is due to repulsion between the lone pair and the bonds than the bond pairs so this lone pair bond pair repulsion reduces the bond angle from 109 degrees 28 minutes to 107 degrees 48 minutes right so you just try to understand the difference between this case and the case where you have four bond pairs the tetrahedral arrangement here the in the from the four corners of the tetrahedron one corner is occupied by a lone pair so the resulting shape is a pyramidal shape not a tetrahedral shape and because of the repulsions between lone pair and bond pair the bond angle is different and now let us consider the case of a water molecule so oxygen has six electrons in its valency shell among these six electrons two electrons are shared with two hydrogen atoms h2o molecule two hydrogen atoms are there so among the six two electrons are shared how many electrons are remaining six minus two four electrons are still remaining so how many pairs two pairs of electrons so two lone pairs remain on oxygen atom the other two are bond pairs so the two lone pairs occupy two corners of a tetrahedron so the HOH -H will be angular or bent molecule we say because the other two corners which in which lone pairs lie that we disregard and the resulting shape of the molecule is angular like i have explained in earlier case let's go back to the tetrahedral case and here we see that two positions are occupied by lone pairs in the in h2o case we have a bond angle of 104.5 degrees instead of the tetrahedral bond angle of 109 degrees 28 minutes this is because the two lone pairs here we have two lone pairs that repel each other so the repulsions are more stronger so the bond angle is shortened now let us take the example of clf3 three case chlorine has total seven electron in its valency shell out of these seven electrons three electrons are shared with three fluorine atoms so still there are seven minus three four electrons are remaining so there are two lone pairs so we have three bond pairs and two lone pairs so the shape of the molecule here is a t shape if all the five are bond pairs the actual shape of the molecule will be like trigonal bipyramidal but in this trigonal bipyramidal two of the places are occupied by lone pairs these two lone pairs occupy the equatorial positions the bond angle here is close to 90 degrees but it's not 90 it's 87.5 degrees so this is all about vesper theory so the main idea is based on number of electron pairs we can predict the shape of molecule when there are repulsions between lone pairs and bond pairs or lone pair lone pair repulsions then the molecule will be distorted from the actual shape and the bond angles are also reduced or shortened